Thank you for joining me. Right below this video, please click like, share, subscribe. If you want to make a financial contribution or become a monthly financial contributor to this YouTube channel, down in the comment section, you can click on my Patreon page. You can also reach out to me through my email address. Carla and I are reading through the Gospel of Luke in the New Testament at a rate of one chapter a week. Recently, we spent a week in Luke chapter seven, and I was haunted by a few words in one verse. And I want to read an excerpt from Luke chapter seven, and then we'll talk about what's going on in this passage. Luke seven thirty six through 50. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to eat with him. So Jesus went to the Pharisee's home and took his place reclining at the table. I'll pause here. Reclining at the table back then meant a couple of different things. First of all, it meant only men. Secondly, it meant no chairs. They were laying with their feet behind them. So there would be feet, 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 feet table in the middle and their faces would be around the table um, and, and they would eat and talk. Verse 37, in that city, there was a woman who was a notorious sinner. When she learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's home, she took an alabaster jar of perfume and knelt at Jesus's feet behind him. She was crying and she began to wash Jesus's feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she kissed Jesus's feet over and over again, anointing them constantly with the perfume. Now the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this and said to himself, if this man, Jesus, were a prophet, he would have known who is touching him and what kind of woman she is. She is a sinner. I'll pause again so that we understand what Simon is saying to himself. He's saying, Jesus, you're being indiscriminate you can't let this happen. You can't be who you claim to be and let these kinds of people show up and do what she is doing. I got a new pair of glasses and with them, I got these sunglasses. They are clip-on, they are magnetic. And the instant I put them on, it changes the way I see everything. Labels do that too. See, once we label people, we don't have to see them as people anymore. We have depersonalized them. When we put people in categories or assign labels to people, that's how we see them. We stop seeing them as people. He didn't see her as a human being. Verse 40, Jesus told him, Simon, I have something to ask you. Teacher, Simon replied, ask it. Two men were in debt to a moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii. That'd be around $100,000. And the other owed him 50 Denari. That would be around $1,000. When they could not pay it back, the money lender generously canceled the debts for both of them. Now, which of them will love him more? I'll pause again to note that in this very brief story, the people in debt it doesn't say they asked the money lender to cancel the debt. It simply said they couldn't pay it. And so the money lender took the initiative to cancel the debts. 
Simon answered, I suppose the one who had the larger debt canceled will love him more. Jesus told Simon, you have answered correctly. Then turning to the woman, he told Simon, do you see this woman? That's what has been haunting me because Simon didn't see her. He saw her label. It's really convenient when we label people, isn't it? Because we don't have to see him anymore. He didn't see her. Turning to the woman, he's looking at the woman. He told Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You didn't give me any water for my feet, but this woman, this woman, has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss, but this woman, from the moment I came in, has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with perfume. Do you see what's going on here? Simon, by labeling, is shoving her down. Jesus, by calling her this woman, is lifting her up. And then Jesus concludes in verse 47, so I'm telling you that her sins, as many as they are, have been forgiven. And that's why she has shown such great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Okay, the text never says she came right out and asked Jesus to forgive her sins. It does say that Jesus recognizes she's showing great love. But Jesus, like that moneylender, takes the initiative in forgiving her sins. I'm telling you that her sins, as many as they are, have been forgiven, and that's why she has shown such great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Then Jesus told her, your sins are forgiven. Those who were at the table with them began to say among themselves, who is this man who even forgives sins. But Jesus told the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Enough with the labeling, folks. We have to stop it. Have you been labeled? Then you know how depersonalizing, dehumanizing it is to be a label, to be that person, or be a part of those people or those kinds of people. Yeah, once we label people, we don't have to see them as people anymore. That's not the heart of Jesus, is it? Jesus isn't having it. Jesus is indiscriminately gracious. You're looking at someone who has been forgiven so much. And I love Jesus so much. I still marvel that Jesus finds it in his heart to forgive me and include me. But Jesus is indiscriminately gracious. And Jesus is disproportionately merciful. Did you notice the smallest movement toward Jesus is enough for Jesus? What she was doing, that was plenty for Jesus. So let's step away from the passage and think about labels and the heart of God. If you are a label maker, if you are label, labeling other people, 
And Jesus may have a story. And Jesus may have something to ask you. And if you've been labeled, if, if you can relate to this woman, mm. Jesus is indiscriminately gracious and disproportionately merciful. God in Christ loves us so much that God in Christ accepts us exactly as we are. God in Christ loves us too much to leave us as we are. So let's take in everything Jesus has for us and accept his acceptance of us. And then let's hold off and treat other people like Jesus treats them. Let's see other people the way Jesus sees them. Amen. Grace and peace.